Welcome to the podcast, Claim Your Excellent Life, with your host, Suzanne Kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne will teach you how to do this through building high self esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self esteem building exercises, relationship tips, and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness, as well as other useful free gifts for you. In this episode of Claim Your Excellent Life, we are going to talk about honesty while working with your medical and mental health professionals. This is a super important topic because So many times I've had clients come to me to tell me that they really weren't honest with their medical providers. And this was especially true if they had substance abuse issues or if they had mental health issues that they thought they were going to be judged on. And this is the thing. The person that you're asking to help you can only help you to the degree that you're honest with them. And it can get kind of tricky because in the licensed mental health world, if someone is asked if they've ever been suicidal, like happened with one of my clients in particular, the psychiatric social worker told her that she would be back in a few minutes and came back with two policemen to take her in their police car to the hospital for a psychiatric evaluation to see if she indeed was suicidal. Now understand, the question that was asked at that time was pretty simple. Were you ever suicidal? And most people who suffer with some form of depression do feel suicidal at times, may have just suicidal ideation where they think they might be better dead than alive, Some of them can have times when they really do have a plan in place. But the question wasn't, are you suicidal now? The question was, have you ever been suicidal? Two very different things. So one needs to understand who they are speaking to and what the ramifications are by being honest with what's going on with you. The other folks who have a difficult time are my clients who have issues with sex addiction or sexual compulsion and really feel ashamed of their problem and don't know how to speak up about it while they're in session. And sadly, from what I understand from my client base, who have these particular issues, most conventional people in the mental health field really don't know how to work with them. Because the truth of the matter is, there's always a cause for a problem, a purpose for a problem, and once we understand the cause and the purpose, we can help a person clear the problem. And what I found is that at least from what my clients tell me when they go to the conventional mental health people to get help, they're only dealing with the sex addiction itself. The sex addiction itself certainly needs treatment, but that's really the presenting problem. It's not about anger issues, and it's not about other things. It's really about the fact that folks with these issues never developed what's known as safe attachment or normal attachment, where they feel emotionally connected to another human being. And these things usually begin in infancy by not getting the eye-to-eye contact they need usually with their mother. It's a physiological thing with the amygdala not developing appropriately, because the amygdala is the emotion basis in the brain where emotions are felt and understood. However, this is the deal. 
You really need to get to know the person that you're working with, understand their philosophy of care, understand that they can hear the nuances of what you're saying and not jump to stupid conclusions and work with you through those issues. It's so very important. And the other thing that is a major ordeal, definitely working in mental health, is psychiatric medication. This stuff is very, very strong. And over the long term, it can cause some very serious physiological problems on top of the mental, emotional side effects that a lot of people feel while they're on them. And most docs won't allow you to come off them because of the withdrawals off of some of these medications. So again, before you decide to go on medications, make sure it's totally necessary. And I would say that if you have schizophrenia and psychotic features, it definitely is, before you start on these medications. I can tell you from my own experience, I was very lucky. I had to take lithium for years and years for bipolar two, and my kidneys started slowing down and not detoxifying the way that it needed to. And my ex-psychiatrist was okay with me coming off it. I had been fine for years and years and years. It was a teeny weeny dose. And she followed me for 10 months after that, and it was fine after that. Just make sure that the person that you're working with understands all these nuances and is on your side and there for your health and your mental health. Because in the end, a lot of damage can be caused both emotionally and physiologically when you don't have a person working with you in the way that you want to be worked with. Just because they're the person with the license, they hold the power. And that's the reality of this life. So look for your, a person who's into holistic, psychiatric, and even physical care so that you know that they can run the correct test for you and really get down to what needs to happen in terms of your health care for the long term. Super important things to know. If you don't look out for yourself, who is? And you want to work with professional people who respect your input, respect that you know about your body, respect that you know what's going on with your mind, even if you have a label from the mental health industry, and will work with you for your best health and well-being. That's why they say they're in business. That's why they say they went to school for all those years to learn how to do all this stuff. So question them on it. And then make your decision about who you're going to work with from there. As always, I thank you for spending your time with me. Till next time. If you have enjoyed Claim Your Excellent Life, We'd really appreciate it if you go over to iTunes and give it a five-star review. If you have found Claim Your Excellent Life to be helpful to you, there may be even life-altering with the information that we have shared here. And to allow us to continue this work, which we really do enjoy doing for you, you can sponsor us at patreon.com. That's spelled P as in Paul, A-T-R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com. Again, that's P as in Paul, A-T as in Tom, R-E-O-N as in Nancy, dot com, where there's a few different levels of sponsorship that you can choose from to help us to continue doing this work. We thank you for any assistance that you are able to give us. Thank you for listening to the podcast. Claim Your Excellent Life with your host, Suzanne Kellner Zink, where she helps professional women learn how to be happy. Suzanne teaches you how to do this through building high self esteem, relaxation and calm, and good, healthy relationships. Tune in every week as Suzanne shares effective strategies to help you claim your excellent life with happiness techniques, self esteem building exercises relationship tips, 
and relaxation information. Make sure to head over to dawningvisions.com to subscribe to the newsletter to receive your keys to happiness as well as other useful free gifts for you.